Hello developers, today we are going to build an artificial intelligence powered object detector. By the end of this video, you will have a working detector that you can customize and use in your own project. AI powered object detector is used to build computer vision based applications for face detection, vehicle detection, pedestrian counting, web images, security systems, driverless cars and many more. Today you will learn through simple code snippet exercises on how to blur an image using OpenCV. Convert an image to grayscale using OpenCV and also resizing an image using OpenCV. You will also build a similar AI solution today. We'll be using a candy kit to build this AI solution. Now what is a candy kit? Candy one click install kits gives you ready to deploy solution with complete source code. You can access many more such ready to use candy kits on augmented reality, artificial intelligence, blockchain, gaming and many more on candy. Today we'll be using a popular candy kit which is AI object detection one click install kit. Now this kit is open source and comes with a permissive license that means you can freely edit customize and share your own solution. So let's get started then. Over to you Pooja for a hands-on walkthrough. Hi all, hope you all are excited to build your own artificial intelligence model on object detection. To build your own AI powered object detector, you will require the following. First of all, you would need to import computer vision libraries and PyTorch. Second, you would require to load a pre-trained model like YOLO and the latest version, which is version five, we're going to use that. Third of all, we look forward to capturing your webcam feed so that you are able to detect real time objects and everything that you need is already available in the candy kit. So let's get started. Let's start by installing the candy kit. Check the description for the link to the installable. This will set up a working sandbox application with all the needed prerequisites and resources. You can download the installer here and you can follow the instructions here to set it up. You can pause the video now to complete the installation. Once ready, hit resume and we'll jump into the building object detection demo. So before we go ahead and discuss the details of this notebook, let's first do some simple coding exercises on OpenCV library to enhance and augment our knowledge onto the same. So for that, I'll open a new Jupyter notebook and also head on to candy.openviewer.com. It lets you develop custom functions and also develop interesting applications using simple code snippets and kits that are available for your use. So I will make a search, quick search for how I can blur an image using OpenCV. So for that, I will put the keyword as make a blur image using OpenCV. And then I'll head on to code snippets. I'll check the various options that are available as code. I see that the dependent library is OpenCV. I can simply copy the code that I find suitable, paste it in my Jupyter notebook, move the repeated code, and then check that after the import has been made, this reads a sample image. So I'll need a sample image that I can work on that also lies in the same folder where I am running this Jupyter notebook. So I'll quickly go ahead and find a picture from my pictures folder. Let's say this, I will copy it into my folder. Let's say I'll just copy paste it here. PGG, it's a JPG file. I will get back and call this file. So as I run this, I would see that I'll get an original image, which is this. And similarly, another image, which is this blurred image. So I can clearly see the difference in the two images. There is this original image, which is pretty sharp. And this one, which is a blurred image. So you have various other uh, options to blur your image. 
you can use uh, averaging and other techniques if you would like and also change the kernel value as per your requirement. So this is one of the experiment that uh, we try to do with the OpenCV library. Now let's quickly head on to candidateopenviewer.com again. And now we'll do another interesting snippet exercise where we'll convert image to grayscale. And then also we'll perform this using OpenCV. And I see that I can find a very, very simple code at the very starting. I'll copy paste this again. We'll just change the image, that image name that we would like to read. So this is PNG format and we have the image in JPG format. So we'll do that. Hit control enter and we see that we get a grayscale image of that same image that we had just, uh, you know, blurred. So this is a simple exercise that you can do to blur an image as well. We'll close this off and also do another interesting, very simple exercise in OpenCV. So OpenCV is one of those libraries that you can do interesting things with. So I will now check for resizing image using OpenCV. So let's go ahead and again, look at the results that are available. Okay. There can be multiple quotes, but you to choose the one which you think will work for you. So I just pasted this. I see the import is made again, and I need to read this same image. It is in the JPG format. I check that the maximum width is uh, and height is set here. And then there is a resizing factor that has been mentioned on the same image. The dimensions after being defined is being saved in a resized uh, image. And the same is written to a file called output.png. So let's run this. And if it is true, then we can head on to the folder and see that there is a output file in the PNG format, which has been resized. We saw this image was pretty big and this has been clearly resized. So this is how you can actually perform very simple code snippet exercises using gang.openweaver.com and simply, you know, blur your image, rescale your image as well as resize. You can do much more. And uh, now let's get back to our code and understand what's happening there. Let's deep dive into the Jupyter Notebook. So first of all, we have imported all the libraries for pre-processing and annotation, like Computer Vision CV2, PyTorch. Then from Torch, we have loaded our pre-trained model. For our use case, we are using the YOLO version 5, which is one of the latest models uh, in object detection. After that, we have taken a sample image which is present in the uh, data set itself based on the YOLO model and this is the image that you can see. The model is, uh, in, uh, you know, the image is supplied to the model and stored in results and then we see that the result is able to provide us uh, two persons. Basically, it says that it is an image with two persons and a certain confidence score of 67% and 88%. Also, it has, the model is also stating about that the two persons are wearing tie, and one with 68% uh, confidence score and another with 26% confidence score. Further, as we go down, we see that we are trying to capture the real-time feed of our webcam. So we try to detect it using this dot video capture function. And uh, these numbers basically help us detect where exactly or what uh, you know device we are trying to access then within this what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, read individual images and then we have passed this these images into our model and stored it into results after that we are converting all this into a dictionary form and also seeing that for each image we are expecting a confidence score and 
uh, name or basically the class to which your particular object in an image belongs. So th that's what is going on here. And let's just go into the demo now. Until and unless we'll press a Q, trying, it will keep trying to capture the video feed. Okay. So I'll just run the code. Right. So as we can see, based on the code, it is trying to capture my screen and just share the screen with uh, you all. So yes, it is stating that with a confidence score of 92%, it is able to state that I am a person. Let's see what it says about this. It's a cell phone with a certain confidence score of 91%. Okay, let's get something else. Okay. Yeah, so on placing it a little closer, it is able to state that it's a remote with a probability of 85%. We'll also test it against this. Okay, we see there is a motorcycle within this and it is trying to state this also with a certain probability score of or confidence score of say above 50 percent and it says it's a cup with some prob uh, confidence score as well. So yes, uh, we can see how our model is working. This is a already built up model and you can get ahead on this and work out this model to work with your own object detection use case. So you now have a working object detector. So you can check for other images which are part of this Kokomo data set and experiment and see how well your model performs for different confidence score. So you can go to this path onto your systems as well. Right, I'll just take you over to this path. So within this path, you will be able to find the data folder and within this data folder, you will have the COCO model. Once you open this COCO model, you will be able to see that it has 80 number of classes. So your model will be able to predict all these which are present here in this, uh, in this as objects, right? So you can customize your solution, but for that you will have to choose another data set and then annotate it and experiment and customize it as per your own requirements. Hope you found this session useful. Using a candy kit is a great way to build AI predictive engines. You can find the link to the AI powered object detector kit and many other ready to deploy kits in the description below. Head over to Candy to build incredible projects on augmented reality, artificial intelligence, blockchain and many more. Try out Candy Kits now. Hit that subscribe button and join us at the OpenViewer community of developers to learn more and build many more incredible projects.